Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Amy Noel YouTube channel. I'm here with Michael Minter from New York, and he is going to tell us a little bit about himself. Thank you for having me. And uh, but a little bit about me. I do work full time at a uh, company, plus I do magic. Uh, it's kind of like on the side and everything, but I've been doing magic for uh, since I was a little kid, actually. And uh, but being dyslexic, let me get to that first. Uh, being dyslexic, um, and you might notice in your video the way I do talk at times, uh, some of my words or numbers or uh, sentences could be, you know, they might sound different. I do apologize for that. I noticed when, uh, not noticed, but I was told when I was in elementary school that the way I was speaking wasn't clearly. So they did work with me on that and everything. And later on in life, I was actually uh, before, it was kind of like before middle school, actually, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. You know, my mother had to fight. She actually took me to several appointments and to finally be diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. And living with dyslexia is not easy. Like I say in my podcast, um, and that's one reason why I did make a podcast to bring more awareness, like you said, and we do need more awareness. And over the years, uh, ever since I graduated from high school, you know, I, I always knew there was, uh, there had to be a way to get out there and uh, to bring more awareness and to give people more hope, actually. But being, uh, you know, dyslexic, you know, like you said, it's not easy. I found ways to, uh, you know, to help myself. Back then you had computers, but slow, and there wasn't really nothing that was taught to me how to deal with it. Um, they just said, you got to try harder, do the best you can. That was a cue for me. I had to figure it out. And nowadays, and over the years, like say probably the last uh, 12, 15 years, maybe more, I've come up with some, you know, not a lot of them, but tips and tricks. The one good thing that my wife does uh, tell me, she goes, how do you take a license plate and remember it off cars? Well, like say the number is, you know, that's uh, a, uh, a, B or something like that. Uh, and, and a number behind it, you know, the four numbers, I'll take the first number, add a number to it so I can remember it. It's kind of weird, kind of weird, mm -hmm. I, I will agree, but that's the way I can do it. I, but even with words and sentences, I might have to go back and reread the sentence. But a lot of times I can read a manual and have to put something together and I can get it because it's almost showing you a picture with what's being said mm -hmm. and it's hands on. And nowadays, uh, that, that's why I like YouTube, because YouTube to me is, you know, you got videos and it's hands on. They're showing you, like, if you want to work on a car, if you want to do painting, uh, if you want to fix something, it's hands on. And that's what's great about it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, other tips I, I, I use is take a word, um, like say the cat ran down the road. I would picture a cat doing that. You know, back mm -hmm. then I would picture a cat doing that and try to remember that and then so I don't have to go back and reread that sentence. That's just an example. Um, you know, as I aged, you know, I, I uh, train myself in a sense to uh, make myself quicker at thinking. And that's actually where magic, believe it or not, has come in. I give great gratitude for being introduced to magic. Um, I was about seven years old, eight years old, and I saw my idol and uh, David Copperfield. And I went to like seven or eight shows when he used to come into town every year and go see him. And it just inspired me further. And it's one gift that many people say, the way I move, the way I present uh, an illusion or some sleight of hand. And I gotta be grateful to knowing magic uh, and doing magic. Um, not only do you gotta practice magic uh, for your audience, mm -hmm. but you gotta be able to speak clearly and calmly and not let your, uh, if you have something wrong, like say dyslexia or a reading challenge, get in the way of that. So when I do a show, I have cue cards. Mm -hmm. I have my props and stuff lined up and I have like a little, kind of like a little quick dialogue, if you will, um, like a sentence or two. I remember what I'm gonna say, and I do it. I perform throughout the Northeast, um, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts. And not one person has said to me, you know, I didn't like your show or could have been better. We always get great reviews. So uh, they, they don't see the invisible impairment, uh, I, I guess you can say, that mm -hmm. I have of being dyslexic. Um, and like many people say, uh, I think you might have said too, that it is invisible. Um, 
you don't want to say at work that you have it because right away you you, you kind of know that uh, how when you look at people if they might make fun of you they might you know make a comment and it's one thing I've always feared and uh, I I just feel that um, you know that that's got to change it, mm-hmm. it just seems like we have awareness for so many things but yet nowadays and until recent probably in the last six months to a year I didn't even know there was awareness on Facebook you can look up on Dexlexia and everything for Facebook and Instagram it's out there yeah but I, I didn't know that and it wasn't brought to my attention so mm-hmm. it's like almost a question of you know why wouldn't teachers do this why wouldn't you know people say well look this up you know well, that's where the awareness comes in. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to make a podcast because yeah. the awareness is just not where I think it could be. And I want to make it even better for people. And my theory is, like when I do my show, I performed for, you know, 500 people, 100 people. If I can fool that one person, that one child in the audience and bring all to them while I'm doing a show, I've done my job. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take the same theory to with my podcast, if I can change one life, then another one, then another one, then I'm making progress. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I just want to be able to bring hope and bring awareness and have people come forward. I mean, we can have people come forward saying, well, I'm this, or, you know, this is happening, or that's happening, and more awareness. Why not with dyslexia? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you do have actors, singers, you know, you, you feel different. And I don't want to feel that no more. You know, I always felt kind of different. And it's like, how can I change that? Mm-hmm. But being a magician, I, I, I will say I'm so grateful that I've learned magic and I've been doing it ever since. And matter of fact, that's how I met my wife. Uh, we met in high school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it's a great story. We met in high school. I, I went to art class for the first day. And I seen her. I was like, can I show you a magic trick and an illusion? A small little sleight of hand, piece of sleight of hand. And she goes, what, what would you want to show me? Cause she's never heard about magic. It was just, she was, it was all new to her. And I showed her and I just walked away saying, have a nice day. And ever since then we were hooked together. Uh-huh. And I, I have, I, I gotta give magic the credit because magic gave me a talent that is very hard to, to do. Anyone can buy magic, not everyone can perform it. And uh, I've been told I have very good grace. I'm good on stage. And it's almost like I forget that, okay, I'm just speaking normally. Nobody would ever know. So magic has been a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. Uh, But definitely for that and for me and my wife, you know, she knows a lot about my show. She helps me set up and uh, travel and everything. But like I said, I I do work full time. Plus we do the magic shows and everything. Uh, But busy. And you have kids. And we have two boys. They're growing up and everything and, and stuff. But. Uh, I've always wanted to travel, but I always knew I wanted a family and, and family to me was always first, mm-hmm. you know, and that, that's how I see it. So, that's but great. I, I got to be very grateful, you know, for being married and having a wife that is very supportive. Mm-hmm. She'll, you know, sit and say, hon, you read that wrong, or this is how the numbers look and go back over it real quick. It doesn't happen often much anymore because as you do age, I do realize you, you just, you, you just got to correct your brain a little bit. And, that, and that's why mm-hmm. I noticed. If I see something wrong, I correct it very quickly. Mm-hmm. Back then, it was a lot harder to correct that. Um, but as far as I understand it, there is no uh, cure for dyslexia. You just have to try to come up with um, techniques, mm-hmm. tips and tricks, and how to cope with it. And it's it's not easy for people. You know, I mean, there's different cases. And you know, you could be mild case, you could be a severe case, it could be a very low case. And mm-hmm. I'm learning. I learned from you when uh, you were on my podcast. I do thank you for your time with that again. And we'll uh, put a so link to that in the description too. We'll put a link to that in this That'll be great. Mm-hmm. That, that'll be great. because I'm going to be having more guests come on and everything. And uh, hopefully other people with their experience and stuff to definitely bring more awareness to make it easier and not to be afraid. I, I, I There must be other people that could be afraid like when you're talking to friends or when you go to work or co-workers, when you go to a store, like I was mentioning my podcast, um, I was one of them. And you just don't want to say, you know, oh, well, by the way, I'm dyslexic. You know, it's right away that fear of, are they going to look at you differently? Mm-hmm. And it, there's got to be a way around this. It just has to be an idea to make it easier and to make it better. You know, yeah. and, I think, uh, you know, just being open about it, the more people that are open about it 
and educating those who don't understand it. Just say right. it matter of fact. And then if they give you a funny look, just tell them what it is, you know? Right. I was actually watching a video. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. And there was a, uh, a woman on there on, on a YouTube channel. I, I do forget. I do apologize. Um, but she was saying, should you tell your boss or your supervisor or a coworker that, you know, you're dyslexic? And she was mentioning something about, you know, uh, which was kind of, I don't want to say weird to me to understand, but um, I was kind of going against what she was saying, you know, that, well, judge by on how they're acting towards you, no one should ever be afraid, number one. That's, I just found that to be, you know, kind of true, but not true at all that, you know, don't be afraid, you know, yeah, dude, there's going to be bosses, there's going to be supervisors, there's going to be coworkers, there's going to be people in society that they either have no clue or right away they want to judge you or right away they might know a little bit about it and they say, oh, you can't read. That's not true at all. You got some most famous people in the world, in the world, that are singers, actors, producers, they are CEOs, they develop companies that are dyslexic and they have severe cases. You can do anything. I want to let people know they can do anything. I'm a magician mm -hmm. and I'm very good at it. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's helped me. It, it's helped me. Uh, I come up with new ideas, my props. I want to change something. And it's just a gift I have. I thank God I have it. But So has that to, brought you, uh, excuse me, has being a magician brought you joy into your life? Is that what I'm hearing from you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, my wife will, will go to our family and, you know, or to her friends and say, well, he's a magician, this and that. And just the title of being called a magician, um, mm -hmm. it, it means everything, especially when she said, I love when she says, you know, he's a magician, you know, show them a mm -hmm. magic trick. Um, it just, you know, as she says, hon, it's in your blood. And it is. Um, mm -hmm. I've learned it when I was like, you know, I, I was like, like, like I said, seven or eight years old, I believe. I've been, I've been younger, but I see my first performance. As I got a little older, I went to see David Copperfield, the master of all magic, the father they call him of magic. And it was just so overwhelming. And then by the, I think the, by the second, not the second, I'm sorry, uh, by the sixth or seventh time, I had a teacher who took me to go see him. And he actually got me to why I was introduced to Copperfield. And that was just the, wow. the, the top of the line. When you're like 14, 15 years old and you have a teacher that says, you know, hey, let's go see him and let's be the last pe people online. And I got to talk with, uh, with the illusionist. It just, I knew right then and there, it was part of my life. Well, and it was that amazing. shows the difference that a teacher can make if they yes. invest that time. And I want to ask you a question on the fly. What advice would you give to parents of children with dyslexia? Listen to them don't start screaming that's the worst case scenario don't start screaming don't say you're stupid don't say you're dumb or you'll never amount to nothing please don't do that please don't i see too many even people without dyslexia even without reading challenges i see parents you know just screaming and stuff saying you could do better if a kid is struggling please please uh try to get them to the help look into it because I, I think you're correct you know and I've heard it before I, I, on videos with YouTube that dyslexia it, it can be or is the invisible I, I want to say disability because to me it's not it, it's just an impairment it's something I have never get rid of but you can find ways mm -hmm. I found ways and that's why I started a podcast because I knew there had to be a way I was like you know, I got the right idea I was like you know what let me just start this it's not going to sound professional, and I'm not trying to sound professional. I'm going to try to make it better with music, yes, um, but I'm not out there to, you know, uh, uh, to make it to where, oh, you're going to hear music, you're going to hear this. I'm going to make it better, obviously, yes, but I'm not trying to sound. I want people to hear on how I'm talking, how I might stumble on a word or a phrase. I want people to hear that, and it's almost kind of like in my mind, uh, it sounds funny, but kind of like a 3D uh, hearing, I, I guess you can say, but uh, the way I think about it is to, uh, you know, to make it better. And I, I think that's a good approach for myself to do mm -hmm. that. It yeah, really so, is. So you're saying you are like showing people what it's really like to be dyslexic on your podcast, it, just authentic 
Mm-hmm. Yes. It, it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make it a little bit more exciting because I know people are going to say, well, listening to him is kind of boring. Mm-hmm. And I understand that, but I'm not going to make it all glamorous and Hollywood. I want people to hear me, mm-hmm. you know, and to bring them forward and say, you know what? I'm dyslexic too. And I hear you. And, and mm-hmm. uh, kind of like a 3d hearing in, in a sense. Mm-hmm. So, but that, that, that is my approach. I, yeah, I hope it works. And uh, if not, we'll go from there. And there's many other avenues that, that I can take, but with technology nowadays, it is possible, you know, to what uh, we got YouTube. There's so many different ways to, to make learning better and more enjoyable too, yes. you know, for parents and for the students. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Michael, so much for your time, for being on here, for being open about being dyslexic and for sharing your life with us. Not a problem. And- I do want to let people know I, I do, you know, that being dyslexic, I don't want people to think, oh, well, he can't do a magic show. I've been doing it for over 35 years. Um, I have uh, brought some illusions and some sleight of hand. I changed it. Um, it. It's just a gift that it came to me naturally. And I don't want people to think, oh, well, you know, he's dyslexic, so he can't do a show. Actually, we have great reviews on our uh, website, on my website. From, it's called mentorsmagic.com. And uh, you'll also see on that website, uh, to where I'm also helping um, working together with a gentleman. Uh, I want to say it's Idaho. I, I do get those two states confused. I do apologize. Uh, Mr. Morgan Dixon, which has created an app for people with reading challenges and dyslexia. So me and him are working together and everything. But magic has been, I, I'm so glad it came into my life. It, it's really helped me. And I encourage, actually, if, if there's parents out there Magic is also a great way because not only do you have to learn magic, you have to speak it too. You got to mm-hmm. say what you're doing. And there are some magicians who don't talk at all. You have Penn and Teller out in Vegas. Um, the one, uh, the short guy, if you will, the short guy, he doesn't talk. Um, that's their act. And the taller guy does talk. Mm-hmm. But it's not that he can't talk. He can, but that's part of his act and everything. It doesn't mean that if you become a magician, like say if there's a student out there and they hear this or, or see this, I'm sorry, um, you know, they say, oh, well, if I start magic, I have to talk. Not necessarily. You could pick up magic, learn it, and you don't have to talk at all. There's ways around it to mm-hmm. you can show something and you can see my excitement in this. You, you, you show something and bring joy to people. It's very well possible. And I want people to know anything's possible. If you want to become a writer, an actor, a singer, you might have to work harder, but it's possible. And don't say it's not, it is possible. Anything's possible. Anything. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing that message. And Thank I hope you. that parents will take that and share it with their children that they can encourage their kids to follow their talents and develop those things they're interested in and yes, believe in themselves. So yeah, follow their dreams. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right, well, let's go ahead and end this video. Uh, Thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and check out Michael Minter's Magician website as well as his his podcast. I'll put both of those links in the description within a few minutes. So thank you very much. That's it. Good night, Michael. Good night. Thank you.